Good morning, folks. We've got a number of items to discuss today from new science, seismicity, and space weather. We've got another sunspot group incoming soon as well. Let's begin at spaceweathernews.com and find the last 24 hours on our star brought small pops at the southern active regions and then another bottom left behind the limb. We're going to switch next to solar wind and see that no further impacts took place. Indeed, our judgment yesterday that the CME and coronal hole stream combined was likely accurate, diminishing the risk of the event. And so we look to the next one. Just behind the southeastern limb, an active region with tall umbral fields is coming into view here soon. Top quakes of the last day all struck the West Pacific. Three of the top four events were blot echoes at either the low velocity zone or the transition zone of the mantle. NASA and the ESA pounding their chest this morning over the new sea surface data. The satellite is Sentinel-6 and apparently it's delivering even better data than they had imagined. In only 10 days, it intimately maps the oceans, one tiny stripe at a time. Up next, we're with Hubble and an interesting planet. They say that during an inward migration of a planet, it began entering the chaotic orbit eccentricity zones. This continued until a passing star magically stabilized the system and allowed the planet to calmly settle into that eccentricity. I'm not going to sit here and say that's impossible, but they don't see or identify the passing star. They just say, this is what happened. Seriously. Up next, folks, it looks like that Arches of Chaos story is picking up speed. This is so far beyond the science and interconnectedness most of us favor. These guys are out on Pluto. Their proof of fast solar system body transportation can be applied to anything from particles to alien ships, and the underlying science implicates that these hidden connections, pathways, shortcuts, represent the majority of the missing force in the cosmos. Down the home stretch here, we've got an interesting bit that has me slightly concerned the galactic current sheet has begun dumping dust into the inner system. While the variations are only slightly beyond expected, and the dust-free buffer zone outside the corona still exists due to the powerful solar wind and photoionic outflows, the things that are supposed to change over millions of years are fluctuating on the scale of just months. That's not possible without some other actor at play. And yes, it is quite concerning. More on that momentarily, but first, folks, you know mainstream coverage of space weather is almost always cringeworthy, but this one actually wasn't bad. The Weather Channel story about the space weather event that could have been this week has only two mistakes, one on the front page here and one within the video. At the end, they correctly state that if the sun erupts big time at Earth, it would be catastrophic. And then they just stop talking. They don't tell you what that means, but don't worry, I got you. Later tonight, come back for a crystal ball-like look into the worst that solar storms can do, picking up where the Weather Channel left off, and test yourself to find those two mistakes before tonight's video. We greatly appreciate your support. Folks, either click my name to go to the channel page, look below the video for the playlist links, or go to suspiciousobservers.org. We have many videos on the galactic sheet, dust, and solar triggering that is about the scariest thing in our community. We have a full movie and over 45 episodes on that cosmic disaster triggered by the galactic interactions. Very much worth your time, and come back tonight and pick up where the Weather Channel left off. We've got your wind maps and shots of our star to close. Subscribe because there's much more to come right here, but right now it's 5 a.m. in the new Valley of the Sun. Eyes open. No fear. Be safe, everyone.